Someday everyone will watch movies this way. See what we can do with the other car. How many dead, officer? The driver of the pickup and abroad with him. What about the car? One guy. He's bought it. Give him a couple of hours. My God, that's Senator Wheeler. How badly is that man hurt? Terminal. He took the steering column. He's a United States Senator. You better get him to Bethesda Naval Hospital. What difference does it make? He won't last till the corner drugstore. You heard the man, Bethesda. Let's move him. Jake, put me on camera. This is Harry Walsh reporting casualties in the weekend holiday. In critical condition and not expected to live, is a junior senator from Delaware, Clayton Zachary Wheeler. He is on his way at this moment to Bethesda Naval Hospital. The accident was caused by a pickup truck crashing over the center line, colliding head-on with the senator's car. The driver of the pickup truck and his woman companion are dead. Stay tuned to this station for further details. Jake, get that to the station as fast as possible. Have Dwight put it on the 9 o'clock news. Now I'm going to ride with the senator to the hospital. If anything comes up, I'll call the station from the hospital. Okay, Harry.
Dr. Keating, Dr. Rand, emergency one. Urgent, urgent. First team, emergency one. Urgent, urgent. Sir, if you'd care to wait, would you please go around to the front entrance reception hall? Who is he? Senator Wheeler. Brady's moribund. Let's get some x-rays. Any word? Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Walsh. I have no record of the senator being admitted here. Well, they brought him here. I came with him. Well, then his papers just haven't been cleared through emergency. Could you call him, honey, and see how he's doing? Uh, that would be restricted information, sir. Until it comes up through the proper channel. Reception? Uh, no, I have no information about a senator to Wheeler. Oh, yes, yes, he's here. Just a moment. It's your office. Thank you. Yeah, you had one. Yeah, I know, it's just his papers haven't come up yet. Put it on, I'll take... Uh, no, put it on the air, I'll take the full responsibility. I'm going to hang around here and see if I can score in another beat. Okay. Is it normally this quiet around here this time of night? Normally. Well, in about a half an hour, you're going to be up to your... Uh, Years in newspaper men. Keeping a body alive is humanitarian only up to a point. After that, it becomes a medical tour de force. And if that's your game, you don't use a senator. Death is embarrassing enough as it is. Keating here. Yes, Admiral. Captain Keating, I just heard on the 9 o'clock news that you have Senator Wheeler. Affirmative, sir. Is he still alive? Barely, sir. Is there any brain damage? Sir, that's about the only organ in his body that seems to be intact. Maintain clinical life at all costs, and a special life unit will pick him up in... ten minutes. But, sir, the man doesn't have a chance... Damn it, Captain, that's an order. Don't ask questions. Your sole responsibility is to deliver him alive to the next unit. This entire matter is to be considered top, top secret. It is not to be discussed. And any written record is to be destroyed. The entire incident is void. Clear? It did not take place. Do you understand? Yes, sir. I'll see to it, sir. Disregard what I said. We've got to keep him alive for ten minutes. Reception. Uh, but, sir, but, sir, uh, oh, I see. Oh, I, I understand. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is that about Senator Wheeler? In a way. Well, how is he? Well, I don't know. He hasn't been admitted aboard yet. What do you mean? They called you up to tell you that a certain person is not here? There was a newscast about the senator being in a car wreck and our switchboards have been flooded. They brought him here. I came with him. But no such person arrived. The hell he didn't. Security, there's an unauthorized person headed for emergency. Here, let's go. Damn it. 
Harry. What is all this crap about Senator Wheeler? Your tape wasn't on the air two minutes before his office was on the phone to me. Senator's fine. We're going to air our attraction. They're threatening to sue. You know it was the Senator's office? Well, they said it was. All right. If he's fine, get him on the telephone. I'll be happy to apologize to him personally. Well, you can't. Yeah. He took off on a packing fishing trip, Wallace Lake, Wyoming. He left late last night. That's a fast round trip, I can tell you that. Less than an hour ago, that man was bleeding to death in an ambulance. I was with him. Jake, you saw him too. Well, actually, I didn't. What? I was too busy taking pictures. Then that's it. Look at the film. See for yourself. Oh, I did. It just shows the back of the head. It, it could be anybody in an oxygen mask. Wait a, wait a minute. Now, there were two highway patrolmen. Look, I talked to both of them. Neither one of them knew the senator. They just took your word for it. And the same goes for the ambulance attendants. That car belonged to Senator Wheeler. I saw the registration. They can't dodge that. Look, Wheeler left his car at the airport parking lot. When a chauffeur went to pick it up this evening, it had been stolen. He reported it. When? After the accident? An hour afterward. Is it beginning to stack up for you, Dwight? It's a cover-up. I'm telling you, that man was dying. Look, Harry, we got to face the facts. Wheeler was a cinch to get the presidential nomination. We can't fool around with a I'm man like that. I'm not fooling around with anybody, but somebody's fooling around with me. Look, Harry. Station owners called. They insist you make a retraction on the 11 o'clock news. I'm sorry, Dwight. I know what I saw and who I saw. Look, you've got a good case, but you've got no corpus delecta. There's one out there somewhere, and it's got to be explained sooner or later. Look, Harry, the retraction was not a suggestion. It's a definite order. If the brass questions my integrity, they can take their job and shove it. Oh, great. Just great. And what do you do if they take you up on it? I'll get another job. Oh, yeah, where? Right here, double a salary. When I prove I'm right and they're wrong. Okay, I'll make the retraction. You do that. Somebody gonna get egg in their face, it's better you than me. <laughs> DNA analysis on the radio as soon as we're in the air. Alan McGordo's going to need all the time they can get. And tell them to reschedule two summers instead of one. His injuries are extensive. trying to get an overall set. Damn it, that was Senator Wheeler. I believe you. Your belief in that dying will buy me a cup of coffee. Somebody's trying to pull a fast one, I tell you. Why would they take a seriously injured man out of the best hospital in the area? Take him out? Yeah, I saw them putting him into a van. Why didn't you follow it? A, I was on foot. B, a couple of linebackers dressed like shore patrolmen. Clothesline me. You still should have made that retraction. Yeah, that would make me look like an idiot. An idiot nobody would listen to except to hear his next retraction. I am going to tear this town apart rock by rock, leap by leap. I'm going to find out what's going on. Tomorrow morning I'm going to do that. Tonight, I'm going to get importantly splashed. You want some company? Alma 1, Alma 1. This is DC 70, Alma 1. This is DC 70. Come in, please, over. DC 70, this is Alma 1. Come in, over. We have DNA on patient. Are you ready to receive, over? Roger, D.C. Hold. Roger, D.C. Ready to copy. DNA on patient is as follows. on your TV set and watch the 11 o'clock news. 
You know what you can do with the 11 o'clock news. Damn it, Harry. Turn on the set, will you? I'll hold on. 11 o'clock news. And that's the news up to the minute on the international scene. Meanwhile, closer to home, the management of this station wishes to apologize for an earlier story erroneously reporting that Senator Clayton Zachary Wheeler had been seriously injured in a holiday traffic accident. We retract that statement. Our apologies, Senator, and our congratulations as well. The Senator has just landed a record catch of Lake Trout at Waller's Landing, Wyoming where Senator Wheeler and his friends are spending a few leisurely days. Now listen, Dwight, if you've got a lot of I told you so, forget about them. Because I saw the senator, I saw the car registration, and that man was close to death. Well, you heard the story, Harry. That's the way it stacks up. Yeah, and the more I hear about it, the more it stinks. Well, I'm going to crack it with or without you, and when I do, you can tell the brass that you can take my contract and do with it what I told you before. That's hardly necessary. Oh, listen, there's something else I've got to tell you. You're fired. they've kept him alive this long. What time's the operation scheduled, Doctor? 900 hours, but it will probably be later. His DNA molecular structure is unusually complex. Two somers are being prepared now. Well, I hope they hurry. The committee wants top priority on this one. Yes, feeling told me. My name's Harry Walsh. I'd like to get a little information. Yes, sir. I've seen your news broadcast. What can I do for you? Well, now, last night I was parked out there in the street, and evidently one of the trucks from here pulled out a dent of my fender. Well, I'm sorry, sir, but I'm on day duty only. Well, uh, now, they left a note, but I can't make out the right. So do you keep a record of uh, the trucks that pull in and out of here, say, between uh, 9, 30, and 10 last night? Let me check, sir. Uh, let's see. Could be Carson Truck Rental, logged out at 9.15. Carson Truck Rental, huh? Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Hi, I'm Harry Walsh. I know who you are, Mr. Walsh. What can I do for you? I'd like to get some information about the trucks you rent around here. Well, we rent anything from pickups to trailer rigs. What do you need? No, no, it's not for me. I'm very curious about one you rented last night. Business hasn't been that good. Didn't rent one truck yesterday. You mean nothing went out of here last night? Just the ready wagon. The ready wagon? What's that? Well, it's a van truck on a monthly lease. Real weird deal. It's got to be ready to go at a minute's notice. But sometimes it's a couple of months between trips. Who rents that? That's weird, too. Some guy comes in every Thursday, makes sure it's gassed up, runs the engine, and then locks it up and leaves. He pays in cash. That's good enough for me. What was the mileage on it when it came back? I don't know. How long was it gone? An hour and ten minutes. Twelve minutes to Bethesda. Twelve minutes to Bethesda? Yeah. Yeah, that would be about right. What are you talking about, Mr. Walsh?
All right, doctors, you've all been through this before. This just happens to be the first time we're operating in concert. Separately, these operations are less than major. More simultaneously, the main danger is massive shock. Dr. Johnson will monitor the subject and let me know if any danger appears. You'll proceed as if none of the others are present. Is that clear? All right, then let's proceed. Where could they take him around here in 46 minutes that was better than the place where he was? The man I saw was dying. Now, wait a minute. Why just in this area? Just because of the truck? How do you know they didn't put him on a boat or a plane? They ever think of the Mayo Clinic or the Houston Medical yeah, Center? Yeah, that's got to be it, Jake. He's not around here at all. Let me see that. Yeah, Flatland Airport, right distance. 20 minutes. Dr. Reddy, the heart soma has expired, sir. Very well. Doctor, watch your soma's heart rate until the lungs, liver, and spleen can be removed. But don't life plans have to file a flight plan, too? Oh, no, not necessarily. As long as our, our weather stays above limits, we go BFR. You have much night traffic out of here? Some, not too much. What about last night? You can have a look. Yeah, we had a Beechcraft, an Aero Commander, Piper Comanche, and a Jet Saberliner. A Jet? Yeah. What time did it leave? 9.52. Did it file a flight plan? Oh, yeah, we were on IFR here last night, so they had to file an IFR flight plan. Where was it going? Alamogordo, New Mexico. Alamogordo, New Mexico. Well done, Doctor. Thank you. I think he's going to make it. Yeah, I think he will. Since we lost his backup, so you'd better notify Parthenogenics to start on a new one. Right. We might need it if there are complications. Oh, and uh, have Wheeler Systems pipe through to my office on monitor number three. Hmm? Yes, Doctor. why this project has to have maximum security. Of course. Living is an addictive thing. For a man about to go home, you don't seem very happy. I was just wondering if the price of my life is worth what it might cost my people. There are no charges here. My dear, are you naive enough to consider Fielding an altruist? Money means nothing to him. The most dangerous kind are the men so rich, they no longer care about money. Thank you for everything, Dr. Johnson. And should I ever find it expedient to return here, I shall be happy to give you a short course in international uh, politics. Dr. Johnson, ICU-1, emergency. Dr. Johnson, ICU-1, emergency. 
What is it, nurse? My monitor showed nothing. He's regaining consciousness. Well, that's odd. He should have remained comatose for another 18 hours. It can't be a rejection. That's impossible. There's no fibrillation. His pulse is up, but respiration is deep. My God, look at his blood pressure. It's already normal and holding steady. What do you think it means, Dr. Redding? Well, I don't know. Except that in the past, most of our patients have been older men. We've tied new soma transplants into an older system. I suppose there's a chance that with all new organs, recovery is faster. Well, then, wouldn't we do better to transplant entire internal systems instead of just individual organs? You know what that would mean. That would mean that except for damage to the brain or the central nervous system, we'd be dealing with immortality. I don't like thinking about that. Taken to the final decimal point? Isn't that what medicine is all about? I used to think that. I'm not sure any longer. That'll be all right. Thank you, Doctor. What do you mean, Doctor? Well, would you like to see Fielding live forever? I see nothing against it. You think about that for a bit. Yes. On his way here? Harry Walsh. Is that S-H or C-H? I see. He left when? Flight number? Thanks. Have a war photo sent out to all units. I'll have someone pick up on him in Albuquerque. medical breakthrough. Yeah, perhaps. Now all I have to do is figure out how I did it. When you do, will you publish the findings? No. Well, I don't like to uh, renew an old argument, but uh, do you think it's quite fair to keep so many of these processes to yourself? After all, you owe it to humanity to Are keep... you really interested in humanity, Doctor, or in yourself? Damn it, I'm not at all sure this is good for humanity. I know that certain members of my staff, including you, have been skittering around behind my back trying to get the details of this process. Yes, I don't deny that, Doctor. After all, if anything happened to you, we might lose the process. If anything happened to me, I'm sure that you and Dr. Johnson and the other members of my dedicated staff would do all in your power to see that I stayed alive. We have lost people before. Supposing we couldn't save you? That'd be just too damn bad, wouldn't it? That'll be all, Doctor. <clears throat> I guess some idiot 15 or 20 years of medical training, he thinks he knows everything. Weren't you a little rough on him? I'm like sick of their poking around. If they're not after my processes, they're trying to see Fielding. Does anyone but you ever see Fielding? Next Thursday morning at 9 o'clock, we all will. He's holding a conference? No, we're holding a kidney transplant. You never mentioned he had a problem. That's right. You've only been here three years, haven't you? I guess the subject just never happened to come up before. Well, you see, Fielding was in a plane crash during the war. He lost one kidney and damaged the other. He's had four transplants so far. This will be his fifth. I think we can remove these external support systems now. The center doesn't seem to need them. His fifth transplant? Yeah, he bounced around for four years existing on such dialysis machines as they had at the time. Then he heard about me. I was here at Alamogordo specializing in the genetic effects of atomic radiation. I gave him his first kidney. And that's how this whole thing started. But shouldn't a soma kidney last more than four years? Normally, yes. But you see, Fielding has a systemic imbalance which attacks the kidney. We uh, could find the cause, strangely enough, with some research. But uh, rather than bestow another grant, Fielding prefers it this way to cheat for then you and Fielding are symbiotic. Yes, I suppose you could say that we depend on each other for survival.
I'd like to confirm my reservation for Almogordo at 11.30. Your name, sir? Harry Walsh. Yes, sir, you're confirmed at 11.30. Please check in by 11.15. Thank you. What does the person do around here when they have a layover for an hour? The same as they do in New York, only here it's tequila. Oh. Well, thank you. Double scotch, would you please? I tell you it was 35. You're wrong. It was 1934. Put your money where your mouth is. Anybody knows that. I bet this fellow knows that. Okay, you're on. Excuse me, sir. Maybe you can help us settle a bet. Well, if I can. What year was the last 30 game season a winning major league pitcher had before Denny McLean? Dizzy Dean, 1935. <laughs> Bring this gentleman whatever he's drinking. Bring us a couple of bourbons. Thank you, sir. It's always nice to meet a man who agrees with me. Jim Collins. Harry Walsh. My sulking friend here is Phil Bates. Probably won't speak to me for an hour or so. <laughs> you from around here? No, just passing through. Yeah, same here. Where are you headed? Alamogordo. Hey, how about that? So are we, right, Bates? Yeah, we hit Alamogordo about once a month. You got business there? Yeah, heavy construction. Company's under contract to Holloman Air Force Base. Runways. You don't look like you mix much concrete. <laughs> no. No, we just drop in from time to time, yell a lot. Keeps our superintendents on their toes. Hey, why don't you come along with us? We got the company jet. Get you down there in 20 minutes. Well, that's nice of you, but I got a reservation. So cancel it. Save your bread. We're headed out as soon as they get through refueling. And us. <laughs> All right. I always wanted to ride one of those personal jets. Yeah. Good idea. Yeah. Excuse me, I'll go cancel my reservation. All right. Hi. Did your friends find you all right, Mr. Walsh? Friends? They said they wanted to surprise you. I have no idea how surprised I am, lady. Where to, mister? How far to the library? About six miles. I give you ten bucks, you get me there in five minutes. That's what I call a real thirst for knowledge. Collins. He's slipped us in the cab. We're turning on taxi frequency and following the cab from here. Look, pal, you aren't in any trouble with the cops, are you? I wish it was that simple. I don't need any trouble. Well, the faster you go, the less chance you have of catching us, right? Okay. Hello, Charlie. This is 73, leaving the airport, heading for the library. Over. How much farther to the library? 10, maybe 11 blocks. Okay, here's your 10. I'll get out right here.
going on here? Where'd you drop your fare? You show me a bag and I'll answer your question. I'm on this is unit seven, over. This is Alma, go ahead. He slipped us. He must have jumped off downtown somewhere, over. We'll stake out the bus and train depot. You check out the car rental agencies in the area. Anything? I think he's almost out of it. He came around a couple of times and then drifted back to sleep. Get your finger out of my eye. Well, now, Senator, how do you feel? What the hell is it? You're coming along fine. Are you comfortable? That's an fascinating question. What happened? You were in an automobile accident. How about him? I... You're doing fine. Just rest easy. Your doctor will be in to see you later. You tell him I'm too sick to see him. At least his sense of humor is intact. When he comes to again, notify me immediately. I'll be in with Dr. Reddy. Dr. Johnson to see you. Send her in. Steve, for a second? Sure, what is it? I just left Senator Wheeler. He was conscious and conversant and resting as comfortably as can be expected. I told him you'd come by to see him later. Conversant? What did he say? When I told him you'd come in later, he said he was too sick to see you. Sit down. I want you to schedule a cigarette flexion transplant for tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Have them stand by for a complete colon transplant as well. I saw them bring him in. Who is it? Generale Fernando Munoz. He has a bullet lodged in his hip. But Fort South apparently had carved around a bit. There's no exact estimate of internal damage. Election time in Latin America could be dangerous. Get me Mr. Fielding, please. Yes, sir. I want Dr. Harris and Dr. Marks to stand by, and I'll need the general's DNA in my lab by five or six. Right. Mr. Fielding is on 12. Reading here. Progress report on Senator Wheeler. He's intermittently aware and conversant. Well, isn't this about 12 hours ahead of the usual schedule? Yes, his recovery is phenomenal in other ways as well. Good. Uh, keep me informed. Since I wasn't able to speak to him before, it's necessary that we have our little chat as soon as he is sufficiently cognizant to remember it. Have you uh, scheduled the Munoz transplant yet? Tomorrow morning at 7. Postpone it indefinitely. The committee voted 6 to 3 for a temporary delay. The general is proving most obstinate. Listen, Fielding, he's not on the critical list, but there's a chance of peritonitis. I can't stand by and see a man die. That's not our agreement. Good heavens, Doctor, we don't want the man to die. We merely want him a bit more flexible before we save him. I'm warning you that this man is in serious trouble. So are we. And as long as he keeps us there, we're going to keep him there. However, if you feel the man is about to expire, you have permission to proceed. Thank you. The Munoz transplant goes ahead of schedule.
think you deserve the honor. Jumping me? No. 
And tell Susie if anybody calls and say I just stepped down. Look, absolutely not. Look, Dwight, we're old friends. I need a favor, a big favor. They mean business. I want to sound like an alarmist, but this could be a matter of life or death, and I mean my death. Well, I suppose we could do that. But how are people out there going to know about a local program back here? Don't you worry about that. Their communication setup is that tight. They'll be calling the station because I'm going to call Alamogordo and, uh, and tell him I've canceled my trip and to send my baggage back to Washington. All right, Harry. I'll handle it as a favor to you. Hey, but what are you going to do? Uh, I wish I knew, Dwight. I wish I knew. Senator Wheeler. This is Dr. Redding. Well, Doctor, I have a few questions about the high-handed way that you kidnapped me and hijacked me to this place. If you can't keep your mouth closed, we have another method of taking your temperature. Thank you. Excellent. Senator, by rights, you should have been dead two days ago. Even if the car accident hadn't occurred, your life expectancy was only about three more years. What do you mean? Your aorta had a critical aneurysm. This gray spot in your lungs is incipient emphysema. This is your duodenum. Those ulcers make it look like a rose garden. You my insides look like that. Your insides are that. Don't worry, we've replaced him. <laughs> You've got to be kidding, Doctor. You mean you're trying to tell me I had a I had a heart transplant? You have had an entire internal support system transplant. Look, I'll be damned if you're gonna use me for a guinea pig. Well, you already have been. We had no choice. When we got you, we were pretty much of a mess. Halfway measures wouldn't have done. So I was brought here because this is where the donor was. You might say that. Is there any chance of rejection? Absolutely not. Cheers. Not done. How can you be so sure? Huh? The donor was your identical twin. Oh, no, you're lying, Doctor. I'm an only child. But you're not unique to the universe. I imprinted your DNA molecular structure on a compatible life form. After assimilation by osmosis, I transferred the organs to you. I don't believe you. I don't believe any of this. No. Here, have a look, Senator. didn't you, Doctor? On purpose. Any system as resilient as his new one can bounce back physically, but I must push him to the limit to see how I can take it psychologically. It's healing nicely, isn't it? Before you put on a new dressing, you better have the test team give him a complete physical tomorrow morning. I'll arrange for his interview with Fielding tomorrow afternoon. Right. Second, give me a hand. I don't want you to ring the bell just yet. I don't want to upset him. How come you're taking him before he's been fed? Yeah, for some reason, Redding wants one with an empty stomach. Just let me get him up to the wash shed. Come in. He's all set, sir. Thank you. That'll be all. I'm putting this only into DNA osmosis now. Hold my calls for half an hour unless they're urgent.
give me, perhaps you can give me some information about a certain party. Well, first you, now the phone's ringing. What's the matter with everybody tonight? Just a minute. I think it's for one of you. couldn't even believe you had a transplant. Well, what was I to think with all that double talk from Redding? But when he opened those bandages... See, what did he mean about my twin? I don't have a twin. Oh, he made you one. He made one. Made two, actually. Sorry, I asked. I'm serious. <laughs> Where are they? Cremated. They were used up in the operation. Are you, are you trying to tell me that two people were sacrificed just to save me? Not people, somas. Soma, now yes, that's, um, that's Greek for body. That's all they really are, bodies. They have only the most rudimentary instincts. You see, Dr. Redding takes synthetic female ova and artificially inseminates them. And then he matures them in the ectogenetic lab. This becomes a shark. But I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Well, maybe I'm being too technical. You do know that transplants have been performed for some time. Uh -huh. Well, Dr. Redding has been experimenting for more than 25 years. He performed his first transplant. It was a kidney more than 20 years ago. 20 years? Uh, doctor, I chaired the last subcommittee on Medicare. There was never any mention of this sort of thing. Well, naturally, it was classified top secret. Dr. Redding answers only to the committee and Mr. Fielding. Fielding, that wouldn't be Hugh Fielding. Yes, as a matter of fact, you're going to be talking to him later this afternoon. What about? Well, that would be between you and Mr. Fielding. Dr. Johnson in surgery one. Dr. Johnson in surgery one. I have to go now. You've got your buzzer if you need anything. I'll get back as soon as I can. Well, uh, now, now, wait a minute. Uh, who is the committee? Yes. 
Sir, the committee is here. Thank you. Send them in. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Please be seated. Our uh, first order of business. I am told that my system requires another kidney transplant. Those in favor? Aye. 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 No abstentions, no denials, passed. Now our progress report. Premier Mubala has agreed to stipulations and is now back in his home country. Senator Wheeler is making a recovery described as phenomenal. General Munoz is now in surgery. No complications at this I direct your attention to the agenda for the day. Now, each of you have been supplied with a complete medical history of these eight men who might, sooner or later, be in need of our services, should we be in need of theirs. The first is number W32718, Paul Jackson, theoretical physicist, electronics, road scholar. Tom? Um, Mr. Fielding, Jackson's unique and proven talents coupled with the potential importance of his current projects, make him very necessary to defense and to the military. Mr. Martin. Well, nothing in his dossier gives Jackson any importance diplomatically. I say he's, um, he's unnecessary. All right, what's your vote, Mr. Williams? Well, he's a maverick, but a good one. As an educator, I think we need one more like him. My vote is yes. Thompson? It appears to me that this man is too far ahead of the facts to be of much practical use to anybody, let alone to industry. On the other hand, he's unquestionably brilliant. I abstain. Mr. Wilson? He seems like a fine person. Has a wife, a lot of kids. A... Mr. Wilson, you will find that virtually every man we consider has a wife and children, and so do the majority of men in the world. Now, these assets, no matter how regarded by him, are of absolutely no consideration by this committee. I'm sorry, Mr. Fielding, but it just seemed to me that... Since you are new to this committee, Mr. Wilson, I'm going to restate our position so that all of us are approaching these decisions on the same ground. Our evaluation, gentlemen, of every individual that comes under our consideration shall be based solely on whether or not that individual is or shall become of major importance to this country or this country's position in world affairs. Now, I don't, and you shouldn't give a damn about his wife, his kids, his golf score, or whether he prefers an olive or a twist. The only point of your judgment is, how important is he to us? Is that clear? I'm sorry, Mr. Peeling. I'll go along with the majority. What do you say, George? I'm dead against him. He's working as hard as he can to develop a substitute for gas and oil. And he's the kind of theoretical duck that could dump it on the world without any regard to its effect on the economy. Definitely no. Medina? He's doing nothing to upset the population control. And I have a strong feeling he may become extremely important in this field. For the moment, I'll abstain. That's too far, two against, three have no interest. Looks like it's up to you and me, Jerry. I'll put it to you straight. I don't like his politics. I think he's dangerous. No. I tend to agree with that. Pally, two for, four against, three abstentions. The motion is not passed. Next case is W32719. Lo siento mucho, pero no quiere comentar. Yes, Senator. How soon will Dr. Jensen be back? I don't know, sir. She's still in surgery. But I want to send a telegram. Sorry, Senator. No one here is allowed any outside I have to break an appointment with the President of the United States. Well, I'm sure the committee has already done the that. The committee again? Who the hell is the committee? I'm 
sorry, Senator, I haven't... Mayo, heard. come here. Who is the committee? They are nine men headed by fielding. Top men in international fields, industry, political, military, like that. Among other things, they evaluate people and decide who will be eligible for our services according to their potential future contribution to the country or to the world. And what exactly qualifies me for this? Senator, you've worked more than 10 years for your party's next presidential nomination. It looks pretty iffy right now. I read where it wouldn't be if, uh, if you weren't a bachelor. Oh, they've shoved every acceptable woman in the country at me. Hmm. You've had quite a choice. Well, even when I do get married, I don't want a, a hostess or a showpiece. I want a wife. And, ooh, ooh, ooh. and that's something that nobody finds for you. You have to do it for yourself. You know, I'm so sick of bright, gleaming, devious women. Oh, you find yourself... Grinning like a fool and bantering along. Before long, you feel like a like a swimmer is coming ashore. Everything gets shallower and shallower. Suddenly, you're stranded on dry land. That's an interesting analogy, Senator. Call me Clay. So this uh, committee of nine decided to keep me alive, huh? The committee has access to personal annual checkups. They knew you were headed for physical trouble. The car wreck just speeded things up. But they elected to keep me going. Five did. Four didn't. You were carried by one vote. They didn't actually want to see you dead, but they saw no reason to keep you alive. I... <laughs> I don't think I've ever felt more insecure. There's a reason to keep everything alive, even if only because it's already there. I mean, when I was a little boy, I had a pet duck named Ernest. He hated me, bit me three times a day. For a little thing, he managed to store up incredible hatred. Thank you. And I also had a, a pony named Gaylord who adored me. He was 800 pounds of love. Well, of course, the day the Gaylord died, I cried for hours, but the day the nasty little Ernest died, I'd cry just as much. No wonder you're the potential candidate. Anyone with that broad a view of both sides of the question has to be fair. Did you ever have a pet? No. Dr. Redding has cleared you for wheelchair. You feel up to it? No, but I'll try. Just don't push me down any steps. Now everything is flat in New Mexico. <laughs> Not everything. Senator. The gleam in your eye and the condition of your new heart are not compatible as yet. Well, I certainly mean anyone as compatible as you. You mean I don't... What did you say, glitter and gleam? I don't think I like that. You're more of a soft, warm glow. I think I'd better go get your wheelchair. You want to try it? That's a second choice. Well, gentlemen, that concludes our meeting for today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes? Sir, we have a report that Harry Walsh was just seen on KRZM News. What was he reporting? It wasn't a news story, sir. Something to do with city planning. Did you verify it? As best I could, sir. When I called the station, they said he just stepped out. Keep that station under surveillance. We've got to get that idiot before he finds out something or starts airing a lot of wild suspicions. Get a new uh, press release out on Senator Wheeler's fishing trip immediately. And get Walsh. Yes, sir. Have my car brought around. I'm going to Project Headquarters.
your lunch will be along. Well, I can hardly wait. What'll it be today? Yogurt and green tea? Oh, it'll be a little more nourishing than that. Well, who's that? The Minister of Defense from Haiti. What qualifies him to be here? I can't answer that. That sort of thing's out of my area. What's the matter? What are you doing here? You've seen what I do. Besides assisting Dr. Redding, I uh, give you a pretty good shave, don't you think? No, but I mean, why why you here? It had to start somewhere. Well, some time back I wrote a paper on the psychology of readjusting people who've been under cryogenetics. Is that where they freeze people? Mm-hmm. And uh, thaw them out after they found a cure for the ailment. Thank you. Dr. Redding got a hold of it, and I've been here ever since. Uh-huh. So you've been preparing me for my own death and resurrection. Mm-hmm. Who was it who said that there's a time to live and a time to die? Someone who had no choice. Someone who lived a long time ago. Hey, yes, but I wasn't given a choice. It was made for me by people that I'm not sure that I approve of. Do you approve of being alive? Not unless I know the motives behind the people who arranged it. I don't pretend to know what's going on here. It's just that I'm not sure that I like it. Don't you like living? I like it the way that it was. I don't know if I'm going to like it the way it may be. Don't worry, Clay. Just don't worry. Dr. Redding will explain everything. I'll come back for you after a while. Dr. Johnson, how are you, doctor? I guess you have some questions, eh, Senator? You're damn right I have. What the hell is all this secrecy? If I'm to believe you as a doctor, you can save just about every life in the world. So why does your committee deal only with the privilege of the select few? If you have the means to save human lives, you're bound by the Hippocratic Oath to do it. To publish the fact and have five million people milling around outside our fences, starving, killing each other. We couldn't handle that, Senator. We couldn't even feed them. No, I'm afraid our society is based on the people's accepting the inevitability of death. To give them hope otherwise is to invite anarchy. But how can a group of, of men uh, assume the divine right of uh, life and death? The only way we've found to control the process. Well, what exactly is the process? To put it simply, we can grow human life. Or somas, as we call them. A soma is simply a synthetic person, just a body. It contains all the organs present in a human being, but aside from having life, it's not human. It has no mind, no intellect, no soul, if you will. Every one of them is identical, except that when one is injected with the DNA structure of an intended recipient, it becomes completely compatible with them. Actually takes on a resemblance. This compatibility eliminates the rejection syndrome. Well, what happens to them then after the operation? They're dead, naturally. Well, but then, then surely you've killed them. Well, yes, in a manner of speaking, but we don't really think of it that way. They're just organ banks. It's unbelievable. It's absolutely unbelievable. Do you remember my mentioning your twin the other day? Oh, yes. Come on, Senator. I'm going to give you an experience very few other people have ever had. But you see, when you were brought in, your injuries were so massive, we programmed two somers for your transplant. They both expired, and we felt we needed a third in case complications developed. That soma is still programmed. Senator, meet your third twin. Why does he look like? 
inject me? Because he's been injected with your DNA structure. After administering, it takes approximately 12 hours for the soma to adjust, and then the physical changes begin to occur. Since he has your bone DNA, his bones change, the same with skin, hair color, eyes, and so forth. In effect, he is you. Not fully developed, of course. He has a brain, but it has a very limited capacity. Probably capable of controlling motor activities. He's completely without experience or knowledge. But he's not unhappy, you know. You have to experience happiness to know the opposite. Get me out of here. security for 17 years. Besides, if the senator continues to improve, he should be able to make a public appearance in a week or 10 days. Good. We've uh, briefed him on what goes on here, but he doesn't seem to comprehend it yet. He, he's been told you'll see him later today. Fine, fine. Do you think we can do that before you shove all those needles into me? I need to know. Thank you for making those inquiries. No problem. A flight plan was filed to here from Washington, D.C. last Tuesday night around 11 o'clock. Uh, it 
was canceled three hours later. You mean the plane didn't land here? Mm. How about Holloman Air Force Base? I doubt it. They had a civilian license registration. There is another field out there, though, on the old Manhattan Project. But it's under maximum security. God knows why. Can I get in there? Well, a few years ago, I was coming home from a story. I hit a storm, ran out of gas, and had to land there. They didn't shoot me. <laughs> what would you take to do it again? The right to release the story you're after 15 minutes before you put it on the wire, okay? It's a deal. And as a capper, we have just had word that Senator Clay Wheeler has been fined by Conservation Officer Tom Sims of Wallers Lake, Wyoming. His crime? Telling tall tales. Wheeler claims to have caught a 20-inch steelhead trout using a magnet for bait. Ladies and gentlemen, good night. How in the hell do they do that? Senator Wheeler, this is Mr. Wheeler. We've met. Dr. Johnson, would you excuse us, please? Yes, sir. Excuse me. Senator, you uh, know what we've done for you. Now you can do something for us. <laughs> I was wondering when I was going to get the bill. We usually make these arrangements in advance, but in cases such as yours, it wasn't feasible. I didn't ask you for anything. But you don't mind having it. Staying alive is the most contagious of diseases. In the past, Senator, you have been impossible to deal with. You were only interested in protecting the people of your state. That's why they elected me. But your state and your people are part of a nation. Uh -huh, but my state is what I'm interested in. Even if your position might not have been in the best interest of the nation. As Senator, I represent my state. As President, I would represent the nation. As President? God willing. God willing. Since you seem to think of yourself as being in that position, don't do me any more favors. We were hopeful that you'd be grateful enough to be a little more cooperative. Oh. Be a little more amenable to problems and decisions that affect the entire nation, even if they are not so acceptable to your state's best interest. You know, I've never been compromised. I never will be. Well, that's because you're a rich man. Now we're dealing with a different kind of money. Fielding, I won't be a part of it. What you're doing here is wrong. It's sick. How can you be so sure that you're propagating the right people? You're completely upsetting the balance of nature. Man was not meant to live forever. And as soon as I get out of here, I'm going to do everything I can to put a stop to this. Senator, your cooperation isn't necessary to the future of this project, but your discretion is. If you were to expose our existence, the entire world's economy would be destroyed. You don't know the people that have been brought here for treatment. If you really wish to help your state and your country, your silence is mandatory. You're not going to intimidate me, Fielding, and you're not going to shut me up. Senator, do you think your party would nominate a man who has had a heart transplant?
self-important idiot. Balance of nature. Every time you step on an ant, it affects the balance of nature. Yes, but uh, I sometimes have my doubts about all this. Doubts? I'm afraid that old adage about absolute power corrupting absolutely may be coming true. Corrupting? How dare you indict the nine men assigned to this project? I didn't mean that. Nothing personal, at any rate. But don't you see the awesome responsibility we face? No matter how you paint it, it's still blackmail. Doctor, I'm surprised. I thought a man of your knowledge and experience wouldn't be so mundanely narrow. The committee is a democratic body that votes for the betterment of humanity. Now, let's not hear any more about it. It's here, it's reality, and we've got to make the best of it. Good day, Doctor. I'm going to get you out of here. Come on now. I should let you die. Now look, I'm your friend. I'm going to get you out of here. God, you're not much good to yourself, but you sure as hell can help me. I need your 
car. Leave my car? What are you doing? sounded the first alarm. Right in here. Where did it happen? Where is she? Well, get her to emergency receiving as soon as you can. Do whatever is necessary. Did you identify the man? Mm -hmm. Harry Walsh. How is he? Give him first aid, but hold him. It's too bad about the summer. Wait just a minute. We've got Walsh with minor injuries, but my assistant, Dr. Johnson, was somehow involved. She's in critical condition. And you got committee permission to schedule the Soma for her? She's key personnel. Of course. Let me know as soon as they arrive. Thank you. Well, doctor, this may solve a problem for us. You mentioned the warm relationship between the senator and Dr. Johnson. What does that have to do with it? Uh, he was pretty independent when he thought he might not need us again for a long, long time. I'm going to have a little talk with him. Sorry to barge in on you like this, Senator. What's going on out there? Well, that's what I want to talk to you about. When we had our last discussion, you were quite adamant in your stand about the balance of nature. But we were wrong, sick. How did we know we were saving the right people? Or let's not forget, man was not meant to live forever. All right, Shirley, what's it all about? As a result of an accident, your friend, Dr. Johnson, is in critical condition. You mean this is she? I die? That choice is up to you. Me? I'll do whatever you say. Just remember, her continued existence might upset that balance of nature you're so worried about. Damn you, Fielding. Using her life to buy me. As I said, it's a new kind of money. What is it you want? I think I made that plain before. Fielding, you play a rotten game. You force me to adopt your rules. You put Dr. Johnson's life in my hands. All right. Tell you what, I'm going to toss the ball right back at you. You make the decision. And if it's possible for you to save her life and you fail to do so, that's murder. And if that happens, I promise you, I'll spend the rest of my life blowing the whistle on you and this entire operation. You're an ungrateful man, Senator. And you, sir, are an amoral swine. Swine, Senator? That kind of language seems to be beneath a presidential hopeful. going to call the committee for approval of the song. Oh, you can hold that off. It appears it won't be necessary now. Prognosis? Favorable. She's going to recover. Fine. Now, where do you have that reporter? He's still in the examining room. How is he? Well, he's a little groggy. He required quite a few stitches. Uh, excuse me. Mr. Walsh? Listen, I don't know what's happening here, but you're not going to get away with it. I 
saw the senator here, and he's very much alive. You're the only one that ever hinted different. Why the secrecy here? Why the cover-up? What's going on here? Nothing for you to know. I'm going to break this all over network television. Just what are you going to break? Now? Exactly what I've seen about this whole rotten deal. And just what have you seen? I found a senator damn near dead in Washington. I saw him pulled out of a hospital mysteriously at nighttime in a van. I saw a bunch of uh, freaks out here, caged up like animals. Then I saw the senator again, reduced to a babbling, drooling idiot. Mr. Walsh, you have already been discredited once in a report on the senator's condition. If you should turn up with such a half-baked story of what you've seen or think you've seen here, they'll probably drop a net over you and lead you away. I wouldn't bet on that. Face it, Mr. Walsh, no radio or television network will carry your story for fear of losing their license. And all periodicals have been warned away from you. Oh, I'm quite sure you've thought of everything. I'm quite sure I have. After your breakfast in the morning, there'll be a chartered plane waiting for you. Just go back to Washington and go to work as if nothing had happened. Nothing happened, huh? I will arrange for you to be reinstated with back pay and expenses. Are you crazy? I saw the senator in Washington almost dead. I saw him out here, and believe me, he should have been dead. And if he's not dead after that car wreck we had a couple of hours ago, he's got to come back from his fishing trip, and somebody has got to answer for his scrambled brains. Perhaps you should know what we're doing here. Would you like to talk to him? Talk to him? He's a vegetable. After I explain it to you, and you see the... Uh, Maybe you'll understand our need for complete secrecy. Come with me, I'll tell you about it on the way. Oh, Senator Wheeler. I have some news I assure you welcome. Dr. Johnson is much better than initially diagnosed. She's going to recover without any surgery at all. Thank God for that. You're sure? You're sure she's going to be all right? Positive. You know, Senator, our work here is to keep people alive, not to let them die. And briefly, Mr. Walsh, that's it. Senator Wheeler? Yes. I don't understand. Not two hours ago, you and I were out. Two hours ago? No, no, no. I remember. The last time we met was at least uh, six months ago. No, no. Gentlemen, may we please go to the examining room? I'm sure you can see now why none of this can be revealed. No, no, hold on. Hold on, this is, uh, this is fantastic. I mean, this is too big to be locked up out here in the desert. I can't sit in this story. Wait a minute. Yes, you go ahead and you get your story out. And people will listen and they will believe you because I'm going to back you every step of the way. I want to make this absolutely clear for once and for all. If either of you breathes one word about this operation or what we are doing, I will have you totally discredited and put away. Is that absolutely and totally clear? And what does that mean? You going to kill us both? Excuse me, Dr. Redding. There's an urgent call for you from Washington. Oh, thank you. Excuse me. Yes, Dr. Redding. Oh, yes. Yes, I see. That's fine. Thank you very much. You seem pleased about something. Cho and Lai has just had his second coroner. He'll be here in about 12 hours. Good. I knew we'd get to him sooner or later. <laughs>